Hey everyone, uh, very, very, very excited to be here. Um, during this session, I'll take you uh, to the journey that we had in Yotpo when we migrated 50 terabyte self-managed Elasticsearch cluster to Amazon OpenSearch with zero downtime. Um, during the session, I will provide some context, explaining a bit who we are in Yotpo and what we are trying to achieve. And then I'll deep dive into the migration itself, focusing mostly on the challenges we faced with and how we tackle them. So that hopefully will, you will gain value from this session uh, in case you will face similar challenges in, in your future. By the way, some of the challenges we faced with are relevant for any type of migration at such high scales, not only from Elastic to OpenSearch. So a bit about myself. My name is Liat. I'm tech lead at Yotpo. More than 10 years experience uh, in software engineering, um, especially with real-time and near-real-time systems that are designed to handle high scales. I joined Yotpo four years ago to a team that was aimed to design and implement a new solution um, that was marked as a super business critical solution and expected to handle high scales. Um, and actually, this solution is based on uh, today, OpenSearch in the previous Elasticsearch, and it's exactly the cluster that we're going to discuss uh, about today. So a bit about Yotpo. Um, Yotpo is an e-commerce retention marketing platform aiming to help e-commerce brands to grow. It has multiple products such as reviews, loyalty that enables loyalty programs, SMS and emails for marketing, and subscriptions. It has 100K customers and 1,000 employees located on eight different places around the world. As a cross-product, um, as a, a multi-product company, Yotpo can provide cross-platform multi-product experience to its customers. One of the ways Yotpo does that is using synergies, synergies be between the different products. And one of the ways to provide synergies is using a system called CDP. CDP, for those of you who are not familiar, refers to Customer Data Platform. Customer Data Platform is a system that receives data from multiple sources. Um, it analyzes the data, and it creates an entity called Shopper Profile Entity. Those, shopper, those entities are very powerful for the brands because they can gain insights on their shoppers. It helps them to get to, get to know better their shoppers. So let's deep, a bit dive into the CDP in Yotpo. So. The CDP in Yotpo has two main sources of uh, data. One is the products of Yotpo, the ones that we mentioned earlier. And the second is external sources, such as third-party third integrations or other e-commerce uh, e platforms that uh, insert e-commerce data, e-commerce entities, such as orders or checkouts. So all of this data is getting into the CDP that analyzes the data, creates a shopper profile, and let's see an example of, of shopper of profiles. So we, we have Liat. She's a dog, lo dog lover. She has a dog. She purchased dog food twice during the last three months. And she wrote a five stars review last week. We also have Leon that has a cat. He spent more than $50 uh, on cat snacks during the last month. And he purchased cat snacks twice during the last week. And he wrote a four stars review. So. All of this information exists in the CDP, and the CDP in Yopo has many, many use cases. The one that is most relevant for our story is something that's called targeted profiles campaigns. Uh, the thing is that if, we're, if brand, e-commerce brand, sending a campaign to profiles that are targeted, uh, it keeps the, the, the shoppers engaged in, because it avoids them to, get, to receive spam. So let's take an example of a targeted campaign. Let's say that we have a pet, a pet store that uh, wants to have a sale, uh, one plus one on dog food. And the, the, the brand wants to send it only to uh, those who purchased dog food uh, during the last month and wrote a positive review, review about the food. In this case, um, obviously, Liat is more relevant for this campaign, and Liat will be targeted to the campaign. And Leon, that doesn't even have a dog, will not receive the campaign. So. Now that we understand what is Yotpo, what is CDP, and what is the use case, you, start, you probably start to feel the notion of search, right? Because we're looking for profiles that match some conditions. And this is exactly where our cluster, our previous Elasticsearch cluster took place. 
in terms of, <coughs> sorry, in terms of uh, scale, we're talking about thousands of events per second and thousands of reads per second. Let's deep dive a bit more into the cluster. So we, have, uh, we had uh, 35 data nodes, uh, compute optimized, network optimized instances, um, six coordinating nodes, again, network optimized. This is because the system is very network intensive, and three master nodes. In terms of data, we had 50 terabytes of data, 60 billion documents, 108,000 shards that are distributed to one primary and two replicas, and 60 indices. In terms of env environment, running on Kubernetes with EC2, self-managed, uh, version 7.16, and multi-AZ configuration. So what were the pains that we had that led us to take a decision that we wanted to change something in the way we worked? First, maintainability. Because the, 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 the scale of the CDP in Yotpo, not only that it's increasing from year to year, it's also changing within a year because we have uh, uh, seasonality trends in e-commerce, such as Black Friday or holidays. So all of those changes in scale required us to apply configuration changes on the cluster to make sure it meets the scale. And all of those configuration changes requires maintenance. They require rolling restart on the cluster. And rolling restart on a cluster that holds 35 data nodes and 50 terabytes is something that takes a lot of time. Uh, it was very time consuming. The second pain is we had dependency with external teams such as DevOps, for example. And even though our DevOps team is amazing, uh, every time we had, each time we have dependency, dependency on external team, things are getting a bit slower. And the last pain we had is stability, because we had a lot of manual operations. And manual operations means human errors from time to time. And human errors might result in incidents. And as a super business critical system, we couldn't allow incidents. For example, we had an incident that we wanted to speed up the rolling restart uh, um, process, and we stopped two data nodes at the, at the same time. We had, a reminder, we had one primary and two replicas, so two data nodes should have been fine, right? But once we stopped two data nodes, the cluster became red. And the reason was that we had hidden indices that had only one replica, and we didn't even know about it. So this is a great example of an incident that could have been avoided if we were using any automated process instead of doing it manually. So after we decided we wanted to find solution, we defined the guidelines for the solution. So first we wanted to have fast and easy configuration. Uh, configuration changes, sorry. And also we wanted to have automated process to avoid, um, to avoid ma manual operations and, this, and reduce the number of incidents. And we wanted to make sure the SLA is maintained, meaning that we don't have any degradation in the performance of the cluster. And then we thought, maybe we should use Amazon Open Search. Not only that it match, might match all the, the things that I just mentioned, also AWS is the cloud provider of Yotpo. Uh, we're familiar with the team. We have a, a, a technical account manager. We have success stories with them, and we also have we wanted to have future potential integrations with AWS services. So it felt like the obvious uh, option for us. As for the requirements uh, for the migration, first we had to, have to do it with zero downtime. If there is downtime, the campaigns not, might not be sent or might be sent in delay, and we couldn't allow that. We also had to make sure the data is freshed all along the way, from start to end. The reason that if the data is not fresh, campaigns might be sent to the wrong audience. And imagine, for example, that brands is sending a campaign uh, and some of the shoppers unsubscribe to marketing. And because we have a, a, the data is not fresh, they will still receive the campaign. And this is a very bad experience. Uh, and the third, we wanted to make sure there is a zero data loss for the same reason. So what were our challenges? We weren't familiar with, uh, with open search. We didn't have any uh, experience uh, with open search. We had f a huge amount of data, 50 terabyte, um, which how do we make sure uh, all the data is migrated correctly? How do we make sure the, the cluster, the production uh, is not overloaded? We had inversion compatibility, as we all know. Open source is forked from 7.10. We were running on 7.16. We didn't have any version to, to move to. Um, we also had a, um, 
network optimized instances, uh, and Amazon Op Open Search doesn't support uh, network optimized instances. Um, we wanted to run performance tests, and how do we make sure performance, how do we test the performance on such a huge scales? And we, of course, we wanted to make sure there is zero impact on customers, as I said earlier, zero downtime, data must be fresh all along the way. Um, so as a start, uh, uh, start of the journey, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, as, a, as, a, as our journey started um, with the POC, like any other journeys in, in our world. So I will say that the POC, before we deep dive into the POC, we took a strategic decision to migrate all the data, not five terabyte, not few indices, not uh, only a few brands, but all the data. I will deep dive, I will explain in a moment why, but just want you to keep that in mind for now. So what were all the phases in our POC? Functionality, operational, performance, and cost. Let's deep dive a bit to each phase. As for the functionality, we wanted to make sure that there are no breaking changes. We have system tests with great coverage. So all we had to do is to switch the image that we used, 716, to, image, uh, uh, to, the, 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 to the target image that we would like to use. And now, the question that was raised, what version should we use? And our guideline here was to reduce the, the complexity where we could, because this migration was too complex anyway, um, and we wanted to avoid, uh, to avoid additional complexity, so this is why we chose 710, because 710 required us uh, uh, to do it without any code changes. The client in our application was running on 7.6, so we could migrate to 7.10 without changing any code. And indeed, we, we switched the image in the, in the systems test to use 7.10, and everything worked, uh, all the tests passed. So we got confident uh, uh, on this one. Additional thing we had to check is the settings compatibility. We wanted to make sure that there isn't any settings or limitation, um, there isn't any uh, settings that is limited or unsupported in Amazon Open Search. And this, we've made together with AWS team, we went over setting setting in the cluster and in the index, and we, and we, we saw together that there isn't any uh, settings that we use that is not supported in Amazon Open Search. We did have a few default values that we had to change, such as max open scrollers, but in general, all the settings we used were supported in Amazon Open Search. As for the operational, we wanted to make sure that indeed doing configuration changes is fast and easy, and that we can apply automated processes again very easily. But this was the motivation. This is why I wanted to, to migrate, right? And in, in order to achieve that, we launched a playground cluster. We played with it two or three days. We increased the storage. We changed instance types. Uh, we ran blue-green deployment, of course, to make sure that everything works as expected and very easily. We used, by the way, we used um, Terraform, uh, infrastructure as a code, for those of you uh, who are familiar. And we felt comfortable with the operational phase as well, as for the performance. So I would say that the performance part, not only that it was the most complex part in the, in the POC, but it was the most complex part in the whole migration itself. So we wanted to define target first, to understand what is the successful criteria uh, uh, of the performance. We wanted then to migrate data to the POC cluster, and finally to run the test on top of the POC cluster. So as for the target, we defined two different targets, one for regular days and one for days that have very high load. Because e-commerce, as I said, it has seasonality trends, such as Black Friday and holidays. And on these days, the traffic is multiple times as any other regular day. So we wanted to make sure we can reach both targets, and also to, to know the configuration of, of each target. So in terms of the targets, we, uh, our goal was to reach 3K events per second, and 1K reads per second in the regular load, and 11K per second and 5K per second uh, uh, in the high load. Uh, we calculated those numbers based on actual usage. We've made some calculation. We added a bit delta to be on the safe side, and these are the numbers that we reached to. Um, okay. As for the migration, so as I said, we decided to migrate all the data. And why? 
first, we wanted to get confidence in a large cluster. How can we be sure that cluster that is so big will function well, will perform well, will be stable? Uh, there might be a network overhead on the data nodes. There might be masters that are exhaustive due to too many resources that it should manage. And we wanted to be really, really uh, confident that cluster that composed of many, many data nodes will perform well. The second is that we wanted to determine the optimal configuration of such cluster. And our only way to achieve that is by migrating all the data in the POC. This way, we could, uh, we could determine the number of instances and the optimal uh, instance type and the uh, other configuration storage in the disk, sorry, like IOPS and throughput. And how? How did we migrate uh, 50 terabytes of data? So our first, our first option was snapshot. Because we had version incompatibility, we couldn't use the snapshot off option. We couldn't restore a uh, snapshot that was loaded from 7.16. Remote reindexing, another great option. We couldn't use that as well because re remote reindexing requires digesting data uh, to public endpoints in Amazon OpenSearch. And because we have personal information on shoppers, we couldn't insert uh, uh, this information through public endpoints. So we couldn't use that as well. Um, OpenSearch ingestion, the managed data prepper, couldn't use that because it doesn't support Elasticsearch as a source. And Option that was raised is Logstash. And actually, Logstash is the official uh, recommendation of, it's the recommendation based on the official docs uh, of OpenSearch for use cases of migration from Elastic to OpenSearch uh, with version higher than 7.11. So this was the option that we uh, took, but it wasn't easy. First, we had to avoid production overload. Right? How do we read 50 terabytes of data from a cluster that is working on top of production? So what we did is to launch another cluster. We took snapshot uh, uh, from production cluster, exactly the same cluster, 716, Elasticsearch, self-managed. Uh, this way we didn't, uh, f this, this uh, uh, option didn't affect production, of course. And on top of this cluster, we, we ran the log stash uh, to the POC cluster. This way we created a separation between the POC cluster and production. Another thing we had to, to handle is to perform it in a timely manner. If we were running the log stash one instance with all the default values, I think it would have taken weeks, or three or four weeks, something like that. So we did some, uh, we applied some changes to make sure that the, the process will be faster. First, we launched multiple instances. We launched one log stash, log stash for each index. So we had 60 log stash indices in the air. Additional thing with we additional uh, changes that we've made is to increase the input size and the input slices. Both are responsible. The, the input size is the batch is the page size of consuming from Elastic, and the slices increase the parallelism, parallelism level of reading from Elastic. And the pipeline batch size is uh, the page size of the workers of Logstash that process the data and insert the data to OpenSearch. Additional ch changes that we've made, of course, in the target cluster, we disabled the, rep the refresh interval and we defined the number of replicas to zero to speed up the ingestion. So let's talk about the execution. So we launched 60 in instances, they, run they were running one hour, two hour, two hours, five hours, seven hours, and after seven hours, few instances were failed. And the reason was out of memory. We launched the log stashes with 10 gigabytes for each instance, and we increase it to 15. And we tried again. And after eight hours, again, a few instances failed. So we had the multiple uh, attempts that we increased the memory, and then it failed, and we increased again. And eventually, we reached 245 gigabytes. And also, we reduced a bit the configuration that we increased uh, before, the, the input size, the input slices, and the pipeline batch size because those might impact, might, might create additional memory pressure we wanted to avoid from. So we ran this configuration, and after eight hours, <laughs> this is the final uh, numbers we gave, and after eight hours, one instance failed. By the way, the, the reason that some failed and some passed is that we have indices with different sizes. So the ones that failed were the ones that took data from the largest indices. And the reason this time was that we had EC2 instance termination. We, we ran on, on demand, but 
uh, uh, the reason was that the auto scaling group decreased, uh, uh, downscaled one instance, so we had spot termination, and in order to overcome this, um, we, we ran again, and this time we defined the auto, -scale, auto scaling group to run with minimum instances, the same number as maximum instances. So this way we like disabled the auto scaling in some way. And this one, after painful failures and one successful run of 60 instances of nine hours, all the data was migrated to uh, the POC cluster. So now we can, we can run the test. We have a POC cluster containing all the data. So before I'll, I'll deep dive into how we ran the test, let's understand a bit uh, about the pipeline. So the CDP pipeline has a CDP events gateway containing, of, uh, co containing Kafka topics that, uh, and Kafka consumers consuming the data from those topics that holds events coming from the different sources. Uh, it runs some validations, and it, mm, the, then the events are being forwarded to the profiles ingestion layer. This layer is responsible to analyze the data and creates or updates the profiles. Uh, it communicates with the data access layer, that communicates with the persistence layer, which is elastic in our case. And on top of that, we have the profiles API that is responsible to fetch data from the, from the data access layer while serving queries to the clients. So let's get back to the test. So we had a production environment and we had a POC environment with POC cluster containing all the data. So now all we had to do is to simulate ingestion and to simulate the API, right? So in order to simulate the ingestion, we launched Kafka consumers that read the topics, that consumed the topics from production. This way we simulated production the best that we could. We, we, we consumed events from production. We created a separate uh, consumer group uh, to create separation from production, of course. And this is how we, we simulated the ingestion. We could also scale up or down the, the Kafka consumers. And this way we could simulate different loads on the cluster. How we check the API? We used a tool called K6, we used a tool called K6 a great tool for running stress tests. It also provides a great visualization of the results with Grafana. Uh, so we took the most common and heaviest queries from production and we wrote some scripts and this is how we simulated the API. So at this point we, have, we had one cluster containing all the data, consuming events from production and get, receives requests that was, were taken from production. So this is, the, this is how we simulated the POC. Uh, uh, we simulated production the best that we, we could. So let's talk about uh, the results. So um, just a recap on the, on the environment we, that was running on production. Uh, we used a compute optimized and network optimized instances and we had 35 data nodes. And our first attempt uh, used Graviton instances, no, uh, without network optimized because we didn't, because Amazon OpenSource doesn't have such. And we used 40 data nodes instead of 35 to compensate the fact that Amazon OpenSource doesn't have coordinating nodes. So we wanted to make it, uh, to compensate on that with data nodes. And this uh, resulted in a circuit breaking due to high memory. And we also noticed that the CPU was, didn't pass the 60%. So we had a few more attempts, and eventually we reached the following configuration that was composed with Graviton, that was composed of Graviton instances. This time we used general purpose instead of network optimized, and we used 60 data nodes, <coughs> so that the overall change of attempt two from attempt one, from, from attempt one was we had uh, we had a 50% more memory, minus 25% in the CPU and 25% more uh, in the burst network. So this is how we compensate uh, uh, the fact that, uh, uh, that we don't have network instances. And this configuration reached the target. As for the results of the high load, I will not uh, share all of the, the all attempts that we had due to lack of time. Uh, the, the conclusion we reached to is that 100 nodes of type M5 Forex large reached the target of the high load. And what about cost? So we were pretty sure that the managed service will be more expensive than the self-managed because managed, service, managed services usually cost more. But uh, uh, the final result was that we had 11% uh, decrease in the cost. And how can it be? First, we could use Graviton instances. 
uh, of course, the Graviton instances are available in regular EC2, but in Yotpo specifically, our infrastructure doesn't support uh, uh, running Elasticsearch Elastic self-managed uh, 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 with Graviton instances. The additional reason is the cross AZ network. Amazon OpenSearch doesn't charge for cross AZ network, and as I said, the CDP cluster is, uh, has, a config has a configuration of uh, multi AZ. And, last, and lastly, the, the snapshots also managed by AWS, so we didn't have to pay for S, the S3 bucket that hold all the snapshots that we took. So the overall was decreased in cost. So we, we, we marked all the phases as checked, and we felt comfortable to go to uh, the full migration. I will say that after we put so much effort on the POC, and the POC, we, we, the POC was uh, uh, so, uh, we, we put so much effort on the POC, the, the full migration was the easy part. Not only that the POC gave us the confidence to apply the migration, but it also prepared us very well for the migration. Just a reminder on the requirements, zero downtime, fresh data, and zero data loss. So what were the phases in the migration? So first we had to migrate the data. Uh, because the data we migrated from the POC was too old, we couldn't use that. There were uh, two or three weeks that passed since we migrated from the PO, from, to the POC cluster. Then we had to backfill the updates because we said that we need to keep the data fresh all along the way, so we backfilled the updates. And then to switch production to work on top of the new cluster, and finally to sunset the old pipeline. So how we did it. So again, we launched another cluster, open source cluster, we ran Logstash, and guess what happened? One instance failed due to out of memory. But how can it be? It worked three weeks ago with exactly the same configuration. And the reason is that the data that was in production three weeks ago wasn't the same as the data we had the moment we applied the full migration. We had more data. The data go increased from, uh, as long as time goes by. And this time, we didn't have the privilege to increase the memory and run again and increase the memory because we were under a strict timeline of uh, maintenance window. We communicated to everyone. We, all, of, all the company knew that we were going to run this migration. We had a maintenance window, and we had to find a creative way to solve it and to solve it on time. So what we did is to take the one instance that failed, the one log stash instance, and we split it to 16 different instances. And we added a query to each log stash uh, uh, so that each Logstash instance will pull different data. So we, then the combination of all of those instances will return all the data from the index. So we ran 16 in instances of Logstash in parallel on the index that was failed, and uh, uh, not just that it reduced the, the memory pressure, it also made the process to finish on time. So we, we, then we finished this uh, 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 in the timeline of the migration, and uh, now we had to backfill the updates. So we launched consumers, moved the Kafka uh, offsets, the Kafka consumer offsets back, and uh, kept this to run for one or two days, so that all the, the updates will be backfilled. And after two, more, two days, we had two different clusters that have fresh data, one elastic and one self-managed open search. At that moment, we had to apply some validations, to make sure that indeed all the data was migrated and all the, up, and all the, backfield, and all the, the updates were backfilled. And uh, we ran some queries that we prepared in advance and make sure, to make sure that the numbers are indeed equal. And at that moment, all we had to do is to change the profiles API to work with uh, open search, to work with the new cluster. And at this moment, at that moment, we had production environment running on top of open search. But what if something will go wrong? We, had, we wanted to keep the ability to roll back. So we took a decision to keep the old pipeline alive for a few more days. Uh, this way, if we will understand that something went wrong, it will be very easy to roll back. All we need to do is to configure Profiles API to uh, work on top of the old uh, Elasticsearch cluster. So after a week, um, we, we reduced, we stopped the, the pipeline. We still uh, had the S3 snapshots to make sure uh, to be really, really on the safe side. Uh, and after two weeks, we removed the snapshot bucket 
and we left with one clean uh, pipeline working with Amazon Open Search without any leftovers uh, to without any leftovers to the old pipeline. Since then, so we had a kickoff on December, POC on January. Uh, we applied the migration on February, and on March we even uh, had to increase storage um, due to regular increase in load, not, not something special. Uh, we also noticed that the IOPS and the throughput we provided to the cluster was larger, uh, were, were higher than the, the actual need. So we reduced them back. Uh, and all of those changes were very simple. We took a few minutes instead of days. Uh, in April, we even launched an analytical cluster. Uh, for analytics purposes, we wanted to dump all the data in the cluster to S3, and we didn't want to do it on top of production cluster, so we, so we launched another cluster. And again, very easy. Next steps. So we definitely will apply it on other clusters in Yotpo as well. Uh, we also have, we already uh, have another uh, cluster that already migrated, much more, uh, smaller, uh, with very with small, simple use case. Um, but in general, our goal is to migrate all the clusters. The guideline today is that every new use case will work on top of uh, Amazon Open Search and not uh, self-managed Elasticsearch. And also, we'd like to upgrade to latest versions. Uh, in the CDP specifically, there are uh, features that might be very, very relevant for the, case, for the use case of the CDP. For example, the flat object that was presented in 7.6. Um, due to the nature of the data in the CDP that receives data from multiple data sources, it has many, many data points, the schema uh, contains a lot of properties. And one of the ways to reduce the schema where if we, for specific use cases is to use the, the flat uh, object type. Um, so we're close to the end, and uh, before we will end, I would like to share with you a few lessons uh, that we learned. Um, the first one is put efforts in thorough POC. Again, not only that the POC gave us the confidence uh, to, to apply this migration, but it also prepared us very well for the day of the migration. Put efforts in detailed preparations. We prepared all the PRs in advance. We prepared all the scripts, all the queries in advance. Uh, this this is uh, helped us to to reduce the surprises, and uh, it also reduced the cognitive load during the the migration, which is complex anyway. And keep in mind the rollback. At every step that we did, we thought, what might can go wrong, and if will, something will go wrong, how can we overcome this? So that's it, basically. I would like to thank you uh, for joining this session. I hope you gain value from it. I would like also to thank AWS team uh, for their amazing support and Big Data Boutique. Um, that's it. Thank you, thank you so much. That was an amazing talk. It did answer some of my questions. And for those who want to ask a question, please raise your hand, I'll come to you. Yes. I'll first be here on the first one. I have only one question. It's more about IPI. How did you manage switch between different URLs, access points to your uh, Elasticsearch and OpenSearch? Sure. So uh, we have uh, an application that uh, running a Java application running on top of Kubernetes. And basically, the, the Elastic that we're reaching to, the host, is part of the configuration. So all we need had to do is to change the, the config map so that the environment vari variable will point to the host of OpenSearch and to deploy. That's it. OK, so we have our next question from here. Thanks, Liat. Uh, what remained unclear, to me at least, uh, is whether uh, Kafka was and is and has been a part of your constant ingestion pipeline. Is it? Has it been? So, yeah, we have uh, our pipeline contains Kafka, Kafka topics first that uh, every source digests events to specific Kafka topic, depending on the, the source. And then we have Kafka consumers consuming data 
from, uh, from the Kafka topics. And when we applied the POC, we launched additional consumer group that, launched this, that, that consumed the same events from those topics, so that every, uh, every group had different offset, offsets. So we could consume the same event, both for the, for the production environment and both for the POC environment. I hope it answers the question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm pretty sure I would be fine without it, but okay, no problem. Uh, so after you uh, had done the complete switch, the Kafka didn't go anywhere. It's still there in your pipelining. Is that correct? Okay, so maybe I will clarify it again. Um. On the slides, it looked like Kafka first appeared and then disappeared. Okay, so let's clarify that. Okay, so here we did the switch, right? I'm not seeing you, but uh, here, we did, here we did the switch, right? And uh, uh, as you see, the Kafka, the, the consumers were up for a few more days. We kept both the, the new pipeline alive and both the old pipeline alive. So we had consumers that both in both environments. This way, uh, we could easily roll back. We could easily apply the Profiles API to, top, to work on top of Elasticsearch. After we got confident on that, we stopped the, the old uh, consumers. Maybe we can take it offline. <laughs> so we can take uh, your questions, if we have, into a more personal contact with her, and you can talk to her. Any other questions we have in the audience? Yes. Hi, so first of all, thank you for this great talk. Um, so given the, uh, all the migration experience now that your team has, do you think like um, following maybe migrations of other similar clusters or upgrade um, um, processes will take less time? And if yes, where will be the, you know, the, the time will be reduced mainly? Cool. So uh, I would say that in general, the CDP cluster is uh, bigger. It, it, it has the, the, the amount of data is much. It has much more data uh, than with multiple times as any other cluster we have. So this is basically the other clusters should be more easy. Uh, not just that. As for your specific question, yeah, definitely uh, we already investigated all the, the ways to, to, to migrate data, for example. So we know how to do it. Uh, but for example, another uh, different cluster that was migrated, wasn't, uh, the, the team didn't use uh, Logstash because uh, all they had to do is just to backfill the data from the single soft of truth database. So it was like, I think, uh, 500 giga. So it was much more simple. So in general, if we will face similar case, then yeah, but uh, we, we don't expect the other clusters to be that complicated anyway. Great. I hope it answers the, yeah. the question. Okay. <laughs>